It's still alive in the box. And the Rangers now on the counterattack. Streaking down the middle of the field. Lays it off. To first. First trying to find a passing lane. In the middle of the pitch. Lays it off to the far wing. Tries to cross it in. It's into the box. And Cardenas collects that one off the head of Torres. And a back and forth game between these two. Neither team having the lion's share of possession here in the first 20 minutes. As right now, it seems like whoever gets the first goal and that one goes through the uprights for converted field goal. But unfortunately, not football season right now. So that one does not count. Two shots on off target for the Rangers. We'll have substitutions here as going off is Mazelda. Coming on is Polindo. Panthers play it down the near wing. Looking for Byers, and in the first one to it, though, was Hansen. The Rangers in their gray kits. Red accents with blue numbers, and trying to chase it down is Churub to keep Byers off of it. And a shoulder tackle there by Churub keeps the Panthers off of the ball. Panthers back with it, though, being hounded by Gelzone. And a strong tackle right in front of the ref by Gracia on Torres. As the Rangers play it quickly, the ref does not like that idea that the Rangers had. And we'll call it back. Rangers will have to play it short. Both these teams in very tough districts came down to the line for both teams on where they would finish their seeding. Smithson Valley ended their season on a three-game skid with a loss against Piper on March 8th, loss at Clemens on the 12th, and then a loss against San Marcos to finish regular season. The Panthers looking for a date ball to Byers. Head away by Doucette first. Glenn trying to follow it up. Back with Glenn. Byers on the ball. Very tight game being played right now. Not a lot of open space around the box. As the Rangers have four defenders. Trying to cross the field of play, and that one will roll out. As the Rangers were looking for Polendo down the wing. And a bit of a line change coming up for the Panthers now is going off is Byers and Glenn. As well as Ram Singh. Strong throw and taken. Alonzo Aguayo being one of the new Panthers on the pitch. Aguayo, a freshman with three goals. You're set to take the throw in, looking for Polendo. Polendo has possession. Plays it to the back line. As clouds start to take form overhead here at Bob Shelton Stadium. That one's in the air for a long time. Jockeying for position are both teams. And Ren's the one that's trying to stay Calm, cool, and collected between the sticks for the Rangers, and he's done so so far with a couple of phenomenal saves for the senior. A strong tackle results in a Rangers kick. 23 full minutes down, still nothing, nothing between the two teams. It's not due to a lack of action. 
Action just hasn't really happened in front of goal quite yet. Rangers on ball. Plays it to Polindo. Being heavily jockeyed by Aguayo, who freshly entered. We'll have some more substitution for the Rangers. As it's Sebastian Morales coming on for Trenton Amaya. Morales, a junior. Lindo, the junior, taking the throw in. Around the edge of the 18-yard box with the Rangers. They'll recycle it to do set. Set trying to get it back towards the attacking third. And goes off the hand of Gregory Gelzone. Panthers take this one quickly. Trying to catch the Rangers off guard. Torres. Trying to heel flick it to keep possession. It was Gracia. Gelzone on the ball. Trying to dribble past his man. Gets taken down. 23 yards out. We'll see. If a card is shown here, it's Bravo de Rueda who was talking to the head ref. This free kick. Twenty three yards out, right at the top of the penalty arc. Four in the wall for the Panthers. Three Rangers deciding who's going to take this free kick. A very opportune position. And they're even going as far as doing rock, paper, scissors to see who decides to take this free kick. And coming up with the victory in rock, paper, scissors, it looks like, is Leonidas Arita, the freshman. Standing over the ball. Four in the wall. Arita driven shot. Blocked by the wall with the follow up. Another deflection. And the Panthers on the counter attack now down the far wing. Three on three. Four on three as the Ranger tracks back. And being taken down right in front of the AR. Is Hansen. That draws a close to the Panthers' counterattack opportunity. As if you're going to foul someone, you really don't want to foul them right in front of one of the refs. And give the ref clear visuals of who it was committing the foul and who it was that went down. And there's a foul right in front of the center ref. As going down was... Bravo D. Rueda, the senior for the Panthers in the lime green cleats. So if you ever lose him, you might want to get your eyes checked with how electric his cleats are. Right about 50 yards out, free ball into the box and trying to head it goalwards. Was Cooper Barrett. And just couldn't connect. It was right there in front of Wren. Would have had a hard time trying to collect that one. Nonetheless, another shot for the Panthers. Not on goal. Nothing, nothing game here. 27 minutes down. Just about 12 to go here in half number one. Some more substitutions coming up for the Panthers. Now complete the line change. Actually, some of the starters coming back on, like Byers being one of them. And Wren for the first time today telling the Rangers to march up field. 
Britton typically plays it short. As that one goes off the elevated track. Almost ends up in the stands. All the fans today opting to be in the stands on the near side. As the sun is behind us. Ball looking for Polendo there. That one will roll out of play on the far touch line. Throw and taken by the Panthers. Panthers team that scored 36 and allowed 24. Averaging just a little under two goals a game. And they surpassed that mark of 1.7 goals a game. They're 4-2-3. and three. And when they don't reach two goals, they're 5-6-1. and one. So a team that really been playing right around 500 soccer. Has been doing it all season long. And you get the same story from the Rangers when you look at their tail. Rangers with the throwing on the near side. Throwing taken quickly by Morales. Back to Torres. All the way back to Doucette. Looks for a cross into the box. And it stays elevated. It's eventually poked out by the Panthers. And they're on the counterattack now with Ram Singh. Long through ball looking for Byers. Hanson on the other end of it. Blocks a plas. Key pass cut out. Hanson jockeying his man. Strong tackle there by Hanson. Pokes it away. And a follow-up tackle. Gets it back into the midfield and results in a Rangers throw in. As it was Cooper Barrett working down the far wing. Ball over to Doucette. Nine minutes to go here in half one. Nil-nil between the Rangers and the Panthers. Right here on Rangers Network. A strong shoulder tackle. Glenn gets the ball to Byers, to Ram Singh. Ram Singh trying to find a lane past Hansen and Hansen. Cutting out another attack from the Panthers. Gets it over to Torres. Doucette will have to boot this one up field. Going every which way around his man right there was Arita. Churub just trying to boot this one forward. As back with Arita goes to square it off to Gelzone. Gelzone going straight up the middle. Trying to dribble it past Gurdon, and Gurdon pokes it away. Gelzone still on ball. Looks for Morales. They're saying goal kick coming up for Liberty Hill. I was looking for a push off there. Was Cameron Burgess of Liberty Hill. And a substitution for the Rangers. Liberty Hill entering this by district round on a two game loss streak of their own. They've been outscored 6-2 to two against Glenn and Vista Ridge. Those five goals against Vista Ridge was their most goals allowed on the season. They allowed three goals two times. They allowed two goals three times on the season. Smithson Valley allowed four goals. Which started this loss streak against Piper. A 4-0 loss at the Coliseum. 
As the Panthers got a chance right here, right in front of Renan, sending it wide as Glenn into the parking lot. Glenn had a wide open chance. Just didn't settle it with the left foot. And he skied it towards the parking lot. Keeps it a no-nil game. 34 minutes down between Liberty Hill and Smithson Valley. Neither team been able to find that decisive opening goal. As things are going right now, it might just come down to that one lone goal being the decider. Do set. Cuts in. Ball with Arita. Goes for goal and it's saved by Cardenas. The first shot on goal for the Rangers here in half one. As the Rangers have officially tallied their third shot of the night. Compared to the Panthers, who are at six. Torres cuts out the pass. Tries to cross the field over to Polendo, and Polendo completes the pass. Trying to dribble past a few defenders. He crushes into one and loses possession. All over the top and chasing it down here is Churro. Brennan has to come out and ball towards goal, and there is the opening goal for Jet Byers. The 11th goal for the senior openings the scoring here in minute 35. And it was due to Wren just having to come out of the 18-yard box as it was Churro trying to chase down Byers, who scores the opening goal here in the 35th minute. We'll wait to see. If that goal right there ends up being the decisive one or not, 35th minute, one nil game in favor of the Liberty Hill Panthers. And the Rangers looking to answer back quickly. Cross here, Morales loses possession. He's taken down from the ref. Quick throw and taken by the Rangers. Torres loses possession. Now the Panthers on a counterattack here of their own. As Torres stops the counterattack and a foul right in front of the AR. As Caden Glenn fouling Kyle Torres. That's a Rangers free kick. Call it 45 yards out. Galzone tries to catch someone sleeping, passes it to his sibling, Gus Galzone. Ball straight. And the attacking third. Rangers with the throw in. Toe down. Ball with the Rangers. Big shot here and Galzone comes up empty as he was looking for a big shot there. Galzone called with a foul and Galzone after that will be shown yellow. As Galzone not happy with that call. That goes against the senior Gregory Gelzone. He'll have to take a seat on the bench as he was not happy with the foul being called and showed his dismay with the slamming of the ball and the slamming of the ball was what got him the yellow. Now a free kick for the Panthers. You don't want someone like Gelzone on a yellow card in this close game. And 
Game that if you lose, your season is done and do set. Pokes that one away and it results. We're saying the last one off of a Panther actually. The opening goal coming in the 35th minute. Thanks to Jet Byers just having a flip one past JT Ren is our cameraman Sean protecting the camera and getting the ball and getting his own throw in of the night. Rangers just trying to find any attacking options here to answer back in the through ball looking for Glenn. Ran all the way back on ball. Morales with possession. With Dresno back to the back line. Rolls past Hansen, being charged on by the forwards of the Panthers. Rangers working down the far touch line as it goes off the chest of Amaya. Rangers averaging just a little over a goal on the road. Could call this road game for both teams as it's the neutral site here at Bob Shelton Stadium as we take into the 39th minute. Last minute here in half number one between the Smithson Valley Rangers and the Liberty Hill Panthers. As the Panthers hold the lead right now. 1-0, and here's a chance for the Panthers, and though Byers looking for the brace, Amaya comes out to collect that one. You look at the season for the Rangers. Their 10 victories, they scored 31 goals, allowed four. So when they win, they score just about three goals a game. Right now, they're being blanked. As they haven't been able to find the back of the net. One last chance here for the Rangers. Big throw in. Into the box, head towards goal. Deflected off, another follow up, and that one goes out of play. And to end the first 40 minutes between the Rangers and the Panthers. The Panthers lead it one to nothing here on Rangers Network. It's 40 minutes down, 40 to go. We'll have the second half right here on Rangers Network following this break. On Saturday, April 13th at Smithson Valley High School, we will be hosting a district-wide career event from 10 a.m. to noon. As we continue to grow at Como ISD, we continue to need great people to join our team. At this event, we will have every hiring department as well as over 37 campuses ready to visit with you about over 200 hiring opportunities. Whether you are looking to join our teacher team you are looking to be a bus driver, a custodian, child nutrition. If you are interested in any of the positions we have available for you, we are grateful you are considering Comal ISD. We are growing greatness and you belong here. Welcome to the site of the new Bolverde Middle School. My name is Shane Land and I'm the principal here. We are so excited to watch this building come together and have you join us on the journey toward opening Bolverde Middle School in August of 2024. You know, this hallway where we stand right now doesn't have much to it, but we know that in about six months, it's gonna look very different. And we're gonna have an opportunity to interact with a community of learners who are ready to make this place thrive. A school is more than just a building. 
A school is a place where we come together as a community to learn to serve one another and to be a leader in that process. On behalf of Comal ISD, all of the amazing tradesmen that are working here in this building to make it come to fruition, I just want to say thank you for your support and go Bobcats. I'm at Goodwin Fraser Elementary and what an exciting day across our district. Today is Read Across Kamau and we're going into numerous classrooms to read to our children. It's so important that we have the opportunity to read to our kids and show them the importance of reading each and every day. Johnny Appleseed left behind thousands and thousands and thousands of apple trees all across America. Just think. The next time you eat an apple, you may have been eating one from the orchard that he planted over 200 years ago. Well, thank you so much to so many community members coming out today to participate in what a special event we have going on in our district. Happy Friday. Before we begin the weekend, I wanted to personally let you know that the Board of Trustees approved next year's academic calendar in last night's meeting. Besides highlighting some of the key points of the 24-25 school year, I wanted to share with you how we develop the academic calendar each and every year. It begins with a committee of 75 individuals known as the District Education Improvement Council, or the DEIC. This advisory council consists of teachers, administrators, parents, and community members who work with district staff to provide input on the important information and or elements of the calendar. This year, the council overwhelmingly said, we do not want to start school on a Monday. We also want to end school before Memorial Day. At the same time, having one week off at Thanksgiving and a minimum of two weeks off during the Christmas break. So what are some of the regulations that TEA has? All teachers must work 187 days. All students must attend school a minimum of 75,600 minutes per year. TEA, or the Texas Education Agency, also asks that we have two bad weather days in the event that we have to take off school due to bad weather, etc. We put out a survey and we asked our community, what do you think about the two calendars that were uh, developed by the DEIC and we obtained your feedback like we do every year. We had 5,184 surveys completed. So we started to digest and dissect the results that were in hand. Interesting, 38% wanted us to have an early release before Christmas. Only 1.5% asked about why spring break changed and then 6.1% asked about why are we starting a week earlier, can we start one week further back. So we took that feedback, we looked at it a little closer, we asked our principals, we asked our rock star teachers, we had the board look at it a little more, and we developed a final calendar that you're going to see now in front of you that the Board of Trustees approved last night. I appreciate your feedback, we're always looking at better ways to serve our community and making sure that we meet the needs of all children that we serve. Thank you. On Saturday, April 13th at Smithson Valley High School, we will be hosting a district-wide career event from 10 a.m. to noon. As we continue to grow at Comal ISD, we continue to need great people to join our team. At this event, we will have every hiring department as well as over 37 campuses ready to visit with you about over 200 hiring opportunities. Whether you are looking to join our teacher team, you are looking to be a bus driver, a custodian, child nutrition. If you are interested in any of the positions we have available for you, we are grateful you are considering Comal ISD. We're of growing greatness and you belong here.
Welcome to the site of the new Bolverde Middle School. My name is Shane Land and I'm the principal here. We are so excited to watch this building come together and have you join us on the journey toward opening Bolverde Middle School in August of 2024. You know, this hallway where we stand right now doesn't have much to it, but we know that in about six months, it's gonna look very different. And we're gonna have an opportunity to interact with a community of learners who are ready to make this place thrive. A school is more than just a building. A school is a place where we come together as a community to learn to serve one another and to be a leader in that process. On behalf of Comal ISD, all of the amazing tradesmen that are working here in this building to make it come to fruition, I just wanna say thank you for your support and go Bobcats. I'm at Goodwin Fraser Elementary and what an exciting day across our district. Today is Read Across Kamau and we're going into numerous classrooms to read to our children. It's so important that we have the opportunity to read to our kids and show them the importance of reading each and every day. Johnny Appleseed left behind thousands and thousands and thousands of apple trees all across America. Just think. The next time you eat an apple, you may have been eating one from the orchard that he planted over 200 years ago. Well, thank you so much to so many community members coming out today to participate in what a special event we have going on in our district. Happy Friday. Before we begin the weekend, I wanted to personally let you know that the Board of Trustees approved next year's academic calendar in last night's meeting. Besides highlighting some of the key points of the 24-25 school year, I wanted to share with you how we develop the academic calendar each and every year. It begins with a committee of 75 individuals known as the District Education Improvement Council, or the DEIC. This advisory council consists of teachers, administrators, parents, and community members who work with district staff to provide input on the important information and or elements of the calendar. This year, the council overwhelmingly said, we do not want to start school on a Monday. We also want to end school before Memorial Day. At the same time, having one week off at Thanksgiving and a minimum of two weeks off during the Christmas break. So what are some of the regulations that TEA has? All teachers must work 187 days. All students must attend school at minimum of 75,600 minutes per year. TEA or the Texas Education Agency also asks that we have two bad weather days in the event that we have to take off school due to bad weather, etc. We put out a survey and we asked our community, what do you think about the two calendars that were uh, developed by the DEIC and we obtained your feedback like we do every year. We had 5,184 surveys completed. So we started to digest and dissect the results that were in hand. Interesting, 38% wanted us to have an early release before Christmas. Only 1.5% asked about why spring break changed and then 6.1% asked about why are we starting a week earlier? Can we start one week further back? So we took that feedback. We looked at it a little. 40 minutes down and 40 minutes to go between the Liberty Hill Panthers and the Smithson Valley Rangers here in the by district round of Texas high school playoff soccer. 5A region four, district 25 versus district 26 as the Panthers Looking for a big blast here to get the second half started as they lead it one to nothing. Thanks to a 35th minute goal by Jet Byers. And the Rangers will be looking for the equalizer here in the second half to keep their season alive. It's a second and third seed, respectively, going at it here. A reminder for the Rangers faithful coming up about 30 minutes after the conclusion of this one. 
Rangers girls soccer team playing the Cedar Park Lady Timberwolves right here on Rangers Network. You'll need to go to a new link. It'll be right here on Rangers Network. As Coach Atkins and the Rangers looking to extend their season right now. The Rangers making a drive towards Cardenas. And it eventually ends in a Cardenas punt. It goes straight to the Head coach Stefano Salerno, who's in his first year with the Liberty Hill Panthers. Heather Boss and her Rangers working for the equalizer. And here's a chance here is Cardenas, though, the first one to it as he beat first. Could have been the equalizer. Smithson Valley had three shots and only one on goal in half number one. The Panthers poke that one wide right for their first shot of half number two. In half number one, they had seven shots and four on goal. And one of those four resulting in a goal as Wren telling the Rangers to march upfield. Rangers just haven't been able to find their offensive footing here at Bob Shelton Stadium and Hayes High School. Neutral playoff match for the second and third seeds. Piper with the home match against Cedar Park. And then Glenn facing against the Chargers and here's a blast from the Panthers and that one sneaks into the left post and Wren not happy with himself as the Rangers are down two to nothing. Wasn't that hard of a blast, but nonetheless sneaking into the left post. The Panthers now with the two goal lead. Goal goes to Marcelo Bravo de Rueda, the senior with his sixth goal. Here in minute number 42. And diving just a little bit too soon there was Wren. Allowed de Rueda to sneak that one in past the outstretched hands of Wren. Seven minutes of game time. The Panthers have scored their two goals and being taken down there as a sliding tackle. Took out, looks like coming up all right is Morales. Free kick 50 yards out. To be taken by Hanson. Five in the box for the Rangers, floats in. Panthers get ahead to it first, it's still loose in the box and it's poked away as the Rangers calling for handball. 50-50 ball still. And the Rangers is attacking third as that one's poked out and taking the throw in quickly as Gell's zone. As rolling into the triple jump pit Right there in the end line was Trenton Amaya, the sophomore, trying to dust off the sand. Cardenas boots this one to the midfield. 50-50 clash. Ends up in a tackle. Throwing taken by the Panthers. Panthers looking for an insurance goal. They lead it two to nothing over the Rangers. Rangers will have to find some type of answer here in the second half. 
A look at the season for the Rangers and their losses. Only scoring three goals, and that one goes over the goal for a goal kick for Wren. Rangers in their six losses. Only scoring three goals and allowing 20. You look at the victories for Liberty Hill. They scored 22 and allowed two. So when Liberty Hill is on the front foot, they're really leading from the front of the pack with that 20 plus goal differential. Averaging just about two and a half goals a game in victory. It's a little over the average goals allowed for the Rangers in loss. And here the Rangers trying to find the equalizer down the left wing. Eventually booted away by Gerton. One of the seniors in the defensive back line for Liberty Hill. Throw and taken for the Panthers. Freshman Cooper Barrett to Ram Singh. The senior captain, five goals and five assists on the 2024 campaign. Rangers working right to left. Panthers left to right here in half number two. Seven minutes down here in half two. 47 total minutes come and gone. It's 2-0, Panthers lead. The Rangers looking for a crossing chance here down the far wing near the corner flag. They're saying one out for a goal kick. It was Matthew first. Last had a touch on it. Panthers looking for the third goal. Trying to flick it to keep possession was Ram Singh. Comes up empty. Yelzone takes a throw in. Trying to find someone to throw it to. Headed forward by Gregory Gelzone. Trying to pressure Cardenas. Doucet in a foot race down the far wing. Trying to stop the Panthers as they searching for that third goal. Another follow-up and Wren making the save. It was D. Rueda searching for his brace. And it was Wren who just got a chance to that one. Just about the same spot as the last shot and goal given up by Wren. Just to the right post instead of the left. And here's some changes for both sides coming up here. Just a little past nine minutes gone. Here in half two. 31 minutes left to see who moves on to the district championship. Wonder if this would take on either another chance here for Liberty Hill goes wide left. Wren taking the goal kick here. Has his short options. Plays it short to Hanson to go zone. He was on a yellow card after he was taken down and slammed the ball. Here's a through ball. Looking for Byers. 
crosses it in and poked away by the Rangers and then booted away by Galzone. Ball still with the Panthers. DeRueda looking for someone in the attacking third across here. And Rind going for it, and that one goes off the field goal post. Keeps it at 2-0. And so far it's been all Liberty Hill here in half two. Five shots to no shots for the Rangers. Ren plays it short again. Rangers just not able to find their attacking boots here in the second half or the first half. They lose possession right there, 30 yards out, and taken down is Ram Singh. It looks like will be free kick 30 yards out. As it was Gell Zone who's already on the yellow card, committing the foul on Aguayo and D. Rueda. We'll take the free kick, 30 yards out in the far hash. Four in the wall for the Rangers. DeRueda smashes it into the wall. Follow up, trying to put it into the box. Headed away by Hansen. Another chance here for the Panthers. Back to DeRueda. Another floater into the box, and they're calling... That one offside. Rangers trying to take it quickly and kind of got lucky that the ref did not allow them to take it quickly. As it was cut off by Gutierrez, who's on a yellow card. Looking for Maya. You know, zone gets a touch to it. Like then Amaya. That one booted away by Gus Gelzone, the sophomore. Another throw and taken by Barrett. Headed back towards the middle. Panthers with a Guayo. Still. Rin having to stay on the balls of his feet. Gutierrez going for the shot, and that was actually Aguayo. Still, Panthers have an opportunity down the far wing, looking for an opportunity, dribbling it all around his defenders, and a tap in for the Panthers makes it 3 0. David Candia with his third goal extends the Panthers lead to 3-0. And it's been all Liberty Hill since the 35th minute. And a handful of changes now for the Rangers as they change formations to a 4-3-3. A little bit more of an attacking option here for the Rangers. And the Rangers chance right away. And it's wide right. As the Rangers looking to keep their season alive. They'll have a corner here taken by Torres. Eight in the box for the Rangers. Out swinger. Headed. Follow up for the Rangers. Panthers on the counterattack now. 
Two on three, make it three on three with a streaker down the far side. Slow down pace right in front of the 18 yard box. Rangers now on the counterattack of their own. Arita trying to find an attacking lane. Arita faints it. Back with Arita. Crosses it in and no one's on the receiving end. And coming up empty was Palindo on the shot. Looking for the Rangers' first goal in the 55th minute. Strong throw and taken. So we're here in the by district round. Area round due up next for the winning team. It's Rangers and Liberty Hill. You also have Piper taking on Cedar Park. Champion taking on Glenn. And Rouse and Tyvee, one headed towards goal. And cleaned up by Cardenas. And leading the defense from the front right there. Are the Rangers looking for a shot here? That one's cleaned up by Cardenas, who chests it down and takes the kick quickly. And the Panthers looking to add on. Quick throw and taken, finds Gelzone. Looking at the season for the Rangers. On the road, they scored 10 and allowed 10. So on the road, the Rangers went 3, 4, and 1. Really were not as successful on the road as they were at home. At home, Rangers averaged just under three goals a game. So Ranger goes down in front of the AR. Finds Polendo, driven left shot, deflected. Barrett just boots this one away towards the midfield and headed back up towards Polendo. And D. Rueda sends that one a mile high. Everyone will just have to wait for this one to take a few bounces. Trying to get possession back. And going down in a heap is Keller Chorub, and it looks like he might have taken a finger to the eye. They'll give him a minute to be checked on by the ref. And he's up and walking around now. But definitely took a shot to the face right there. as the winner of this game will take on MacArthur or Medina Valley. In the area around. And keeping an update with other Comal schools, you'll have Piper, who's playing Cedar Park. They're at Piper. They'll take on the winner 
Valamo Heights and Southwest Legacy. Just about an hour down, free kick here for the Rangers and Cardenas cleans it up. As it was Kyle Torres looking for the goal, the opening goal for the Rangers. As they're still hunting for their opening goal. They'll need three more here in the last 20 minutes to keep their season alive. Try to send this one to extra time as things stand. And Torres gets nutmegged as the pass is completed. The Byers going down the far near side. Zeke Gracia goes to the corner of flag. Trying to get by Hansen. A big shot here goes through the uprights. And nice touch there by one of the Cedar Park Lady Timberwolves to keep that one close. We'll have a change here for the Rangers as Hansen goes off. Coming on is Doucette. You've kind of got to applaud the back line of the Rangers. It hasn't been an easy night. And being just a three-goal game has been keeping it close. As the Panthers, seven shots in half number one. And six more here in half number two. The forwards for the Rangers just haven't been able to find any attacking positions against the tough back line of the Panthers. Only three shots in half one and one here. And half number two as we're officially eclipsed. The hour mark. Final 20 minutes. Rangers searching for a goal. This is a good chance here in trying to dummy that one. Was Mazota. And thought someone was making the run behind him. As Cardenas boots that one upfield. It's really been for Smithson Valley if they don't reach that average goal. A game of round two goals. It's where they've come up short. When they don't reach two goals a game, only two wins, six losses and two ties. We're checking on the Panther. Checking on. Steve Ruinda, and it will be a throw in for the Rangers. Well, the Rangers surpassed that two goal mark. Eight, oh, and two on the season. Majority of their season victories come in with two plus goals. A chance here for the Rangers, and that one's. Booted towards the street. And if you're on the street right next to Bob Shelton High School or Bob Shelton Stadium, you might be walking away with a select soccer ball. Big throw in here by the Rangers. And Cardenas cleans it up. It's still loose and it's booted away. And what a chance there for the Rangers. And what a throw to get that one all the way from the touch line all the way to the back post. And really giving the Rangers attackers a good chance at goal against Cardenas. Trying to be on the other end of it. 
lowered the Rangers and just came up a little bit empty. A strong tackle there by Arita. Here comes a few changes for the Panthers. Going off is Barrett, Gutierrez, and Aguayo. A strong tackle there by Doucette. Takes out Glenn, one of the Liberty Hill captains. A reminder to the Ranger faithful. Coming up about 20 to 30 minutes after this match. Rangers girls soccer taking on the Lady Timberwolves. As they look to advance to the area around. DeRuinda floats this one into the 18-yard box and down goes the Panther. Play on. Panthers searching for extra goal, number four. Over to Polundo in the central area. All right, by two Panthers, they didn't have anyone to pass it to, and just an arm takedown was Kyle Torres. Trying to stop the forward momentum of the Panthers and he's trying to plead his case to the head referee. And with a really an arm takedown more than anything in Wren having to deal with an extra ball on the pitch. It's kind of a great takedown by Torres. If he was on the wrestling mat or in the MA fight, but here on the soccer pitch, it's Highly frowned upon to do an arm takedown like that. And the Panthers back with possession. That one is called offside. Z Gracia, the sophomore with an assist on the season. Sixty-fifth minute. Rangers nil. Panthers three. The Rangers looking for an opportunity here in Cardenas. Picks it up cleanly, leaving no scraps for the Rangers to feast upon. De Ruinda. Just boosts that one forward. Goes all the way to Wren. No zone. What could be his final match as a Ranger of how things stand. Nine seniors in total on this Rangers team. Trying to get one more goal to add to their tally on the season. In a game where they just have not been able to find the passing lanes to get the ball into dangerous positions. The Panthers now just bleeding time off the clock with a short throw in. And throw in that took a good 20 seconds off the clock with how they opted to play that one. They'll play it all the way back to Gurdon. A through ball here off the head of the Panthers and ball still loose and diving for it was Byers. Byers with the opening goal in the 35th minute. Followed up by DeRuida's goal in the 42nd. And then Candia's goal in the 55th minute. There's a tackle right in front of the pole vaulting mat is going down was Churum. Have a couple of substitutions coming up for the Rangers here.
Coming on is Cash Olivares, one of the nine seniors. And one last chance to don the Rangers kit. Zelda takes it away. Plays it down the far wing. Burt, the sophomore, freshly entered. Throw in for the Panthers in front of the Rangers bench. Chance here for the Panthers after the throw in. Gel zone. Di Rueda taken away by the Panthers. Panthers now just opting to pass it back and forth as Byers goes down. Seventieth minute. Come and gone. The Rangers season looking ever bleaker by the second. Hard deficit to come back from, 3-0. Here, 10 minutes left. McGinnis will take the throw in. Another one of those Rangers seniors in one last chance to appear for Smithson Valley. Yellow zone with the driven pass to the attacking third, cut off by Gurton. Long shot taken away, and it's wide left. Just the second shot of the second half for the Rangers, and that's really been how the game has gone all night long for Smithson Valley. Cardenas bleeding off as much time as the ref allows. Eight and a half minutes to go on the Rangers season. As the Rangers still searching for one goal. Here versus Liberty Hill. McGinnis passes it over to Set. Rangers with a chance here. Flicks it, 18 yard box and headed away by the Panthers. Coming up a little slowly there is Kyle Torres. I have been boot to boot clash. Gel zone. To do set. Cox the junior. First appearance here through ball and Cardenas First one to it. Beating Morales in the foot race. The Rangers seeding started off at the Alamo Heights Invitational where they went two and two with one of the victories coming via PK over Brewer. The second tournament went 1-1-1 one, one, and one against Jay, London, and Rowlett. Starting the district season with a tie versus Tyvee. 
as Torres goes off for the Rangers. Against Tyvee on the season. Rangers went one and one. Or oh one and one with a tie and a loss. A loss coming in Kerrville. Looking for the slide tackle there was Hanson. A chance here for the Panthers and Wren being clashed into. And Carlin is shown to the Panthers and now Hanson turns towards Wren. Yellow card. Is shown to Dar Ram Singh, the senior. Is just trying to protect Wren there. Had the right to the ball. Came out to collect it. Just smashing into him was Ram Singh. And here in minute. 33, there's a goalkeeper substitution as Wren comes off in his final match as a Ranger. And coming in for Wren, Noah Herrera getting one last appearance between the sticks for the Rangers here in his senior season. Just getting all the seniors one last appearance. Smithson Valley kits before they go off to college or whatever these young men are deciding to do. Next in their future endeavors, we wish them the best. It's 74th minute, five and a half to go. The Rangers still searching for their opening goal here in the by district round. They're down three nil. And the Panthers starting to just hound possession. Keep the clock ticking, not giving the Rangers any opportunity to even search for a goal. Gelzone here. Driving goal wards and loses possession. It's in the center of the area. DeRuinda loses it to Morales. Goes to McGinnis. Taken down hard. It was Burt who was taken down. And the Panthers throwing coming up. Throwing to be taken by Luna. They're actually saying kick. And Rwinda will take the kick. As the Panthers booting it all the way to their attacking third. The Rangers on the defensive footing, taken down. Hansen has to play it to Doucette. Doucette switches the fields over to Cox. Rangers lose possession on the driven pass. Glenn cut it off. And Rashid here. And Herrera fielding that one cleanly for the Rangers. And Doucette goes down. Rangers will have a kick and a substitution waiting for the Panthers. McGinnis, far touch line. Every touch by the Rangers. Loses possession. Ozone trying to track it down to do set. And in game key losses against Smithson Valley on February 6th and on March 1st, Smithson Valley 
two wins over the Cougars. Looking at champion matches. Rangers had a victory and a tie against the Chargers who took the fourth slot in District 26. They were tasked with taking on Glenn here in the by district round. Against Veterans Memorial. Swinson Valley came away with a win and a loss. Now scoring them four to two. Against Wagner, the Rangers dominate with 11 goals and two allowed and going down in a heap here is the Panther. Comes up rather quickly. It was Zaid Rashid, a junior, and DeRuenda. DeRuenda standing over this one, 42 yards out, straight down the middle. And Herrera. Will likely be challenged here with two minutes to go. Looking at the Seguin matches. Rangers outscored them. Two victories, six nil. Piper being the thorn in the side. Of the Rangers, outscoring the Rangers 5 0 in that one from De Rueda. Wide left. And that's how the district season went for the Rangers, where they took the second seed in District 26, going 8 4 and 2. Scoring 30 district goals and allowing 11. And Piper taking that top seed with 13 and 0 record. Very tough district 26 with the likes of Tyvee and Champion. And then you had Canyon who didn't make it to the playoffs. Kind of a testament of how tough a district is that Canyon. Cougars did not make it to playoffs. Then you look at District 25 that Liberty Hill takes part of. You got Glenn. Almost had a perfect season with just the exception of one tie. Rouse. And Liberty Hill, essentially the only difference between those two was a single tie. So you take away a single tie from Liberty Hill season. They might have been that second seed and a chance there from the Rangers booted away. We're in the last minute as Liberty Hill looking to move on to the area around. Coach Salerno in his first year with the Panthers. Looking for the by district championship and Coach Boss. Rangers just could not find anything towards goal to get the scoring open for the Rangers here at Hayes High School against Liberty Hill. In under 10 seconds now on the Rangers season. And this will do it in Liberty Hill. Takes the by district championship over the Rangers three to nothing. Rangers. Just outmatched here in the by district round. Only five shots, only one on goal. And Liberty
Liberty Hill. Three goals by Byers, DeRueda, and Candia. Get them the three nothing win over the Rangers, and that concludes the Rangers' 2024 campaign. They go to 10, 10, and four, and Liberty Hill moves to 11, seven, and four. That concludes our coverage of game one of this doubleheader tonight is next up, Rangers girls soccer versus Cedar Park. Lady Timberwolves right here on Rangers Network. Until next time here in 30 minutes, see you soon.